Hey, I'm Gaur. When grading, do you ever struggle with getting the perfect exposure, white balance, or skin tones? Well, this free tool will help you, especially if your footage has some grey cards or a color checker. Well, let's head over to Resolve and see how to use it. So before we get to the digital, just a quick note about my color management. I like to color manage node-based using color space transforms. So as the very first node in my node tree, I have a color space transform going from the camera's color space to my working space of the Vinci White Gamut Intermediate. And on the timeline level at the very, very end, I have another color space transform going from the working space to my reference monitor space, which is Rec. 709 Gamma 24. Now this tool will also work if you're using Resolve's timeline-based color management, the automatic one that you choose from project settings. Now when it comes to using this digital, we have two options on where to place it. First off, you can place it on the clip level, for example right after your balancing node. So create a new serial node, open the effects panel, search for digital, and from the digital list choose checkers. An alternative place would be on the timeline level before the ODT, or in the case that you're using the automated color management, the ODT already comes automatically after the timeline level. Now, after placing the DCTL into an O3, we still have to do two things before we can start using it. First, you have to choose the correct transfer function. This is, a bit confusingly, also known as Gamma. Now, because I'm working in DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate, I will choose DaVinci Intermediate, which also happens to be the default. Secondly, we'll have to calibrate the skin checker. For this, Find a shot that you have already balanced and are happy with the skin tones. Then enable skin checker and move the skin vector until the biggest area of the skin is yellow. And with that, you're ready to use the tool. So if you're using it clip by clip, you can ripple the node to all of your clips. Or if you're using it on the timeline level, you're ready to go. So for the first example, let's say they have shot a color checker. I'd first do color balance, so I'll enable the white balance checker, go back to my balance node, and using, for example, offset, I'll just play around and find the place where most of the grey patches are highlighted as green, meaning that they're neutral. Then secondly, I'll disable that and use the middle grey checker, and with these calibrate color checkers, the fourth grey patch should be middle grey. So I'll lift offset until it turns red. Finally, Let's move a bit forward, where the face is in focus, and enable the skin checker. We can see that most of the key side of the face is in fact yellow, so I'd say there's no further need to change the balance, and I'm happy with the shot. Though in the case that you're going for specific ratios between the key and field side, you can use false color to match that as well. The way it works is that this faint green tone indicates middle gray, the warmer colors above that go in half-stop increments, and the cooler colors go in the opposite direction, also in half-stop increments. Everything above and below the range is rendered in monochrome, meaning black and white. Now, I'll be honest, I try to strive for maximum efficiency. And jumping between the balance node and the checker node, it takes time and can become quite annoying. So instead, I have incorporated all the same functionality into my corrector DCTL, which is what I use for primary corrections. So I'll copy over the skin vector calibration value, enable white balance, and well, as we can see, the white balance checkers guide is kind of blocking our gray patches, because this color chart wasn't shot the best. Thankfully, there's an option to disable the checker guides. And now I can see that the camera white balance was already set up quite well, and the gray patches appear green. Though just to make sure, I can play around a bit with temp and tint just to make sure that we are, in fact, hitting the best balance. Next up, once again, I'll do middle grey, and start lowering the exposure until the middle grey patch turns red. Finally, I'll enable skin checking, and once again, I can confirm that the skin tones are right where they should be. Now, for this final shot, we don't have a color chart, meaning that we'll have to set both exposure and white balance based on something else. In this case, for setting exposure, I'd opt for using false color. A good rule of thumb for well-exposed skin tones is a mix of exposures between middle gray and plus two stops, meaning the warmer side of our false color. I'll increase the exposure 
to a place where we still have some middle grey, but also have peaks of plus two stops. Now for white balance, let's use the skin checker. Though right off the bat, we can see that none of the skin tones register as being skin tone. So instead of messing about with this checker, I'll first use the vector scope to get a general feel for where the image should sit. And after that, I'll fine tune using the skin checker. Trying to find a place where, once again, the biggest part of the skin turns yellow. So in this case, we have quite a lot of different tones in the skin tone, so we can't really get a perfect match. There you go. If you like what you saw, you can find links down below to the checker, my free DCTL pack, the demo pack, and also the corrector DCTL. See you next time.